<laughs> All right, and we're here today with Team San Jose. Team San Jose. Santa Clara Valley. Santa Clara Valley. Yes. Great. And um, we're going to look at Milan. Milan Gambier. Milan Gambier project. And it, tell me about it. Okay. In about three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Yeah. So my name is Milan. Uh -huh. uh, and this product here is a future of wearable technology and cancer detection. Uh -huh. I've witnessed my mom, my grandfather, my uncle all go through cancer therapy and treatment. Uh -huh. and what I've seen is that it's a pain. It's a pain to go every three months to the MRI machine, pet the machine, get all these blood drugs and stuff. It's a true pain. So I wanted to make something that's comfortable, uh -huh. affordable, and wearable. And then we can detect cancer recurrence at its earliest stages. Uh -huh. so the problem uh -huh. with current screening methods for cancer recurrence, such as PET scanners and MRI scanners, is that they're expensive. Yes. Uh, an MRI scan costs about three thousand dollars, and the mm -hmm. device is anywhere from three to five million dollars. Right. Same applies to PET scanners. They require significant infrastructure. These are really, really big devices. Mm -hmm. um, they do not monitor continuously, so you have to get scans every few months, and they lack the utmost spatial resolution to detect every last cell. Mm -hmm. So you have to wait till uh, a tumor is actually about ten millimeters in size before you can actually detect it. So I decided to go on a molecular scale and look at a molecular way of how to detect cancer recurrence. So five years ago, researchers at Harvard discovered that as a tumor regrows, these circulating tumor cells are present in the bloodstream and lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. So my method was to use ultrasound and microbubbles as a way of detecting these circulating tumor cells in the bloodstream. And these microbubbles, they're really cool. They're small bubbles, about one to five microns in diameter. Mm -hmm. And when you emit an ultrasound wave at a microbubble, a microbubble actually absorbs this wave and reflect back a unique ultrasound signature and that can be identified by the device which I proposed. So in the actual device, which is shown here, which I've just proven the concept for so far, mm -hmm. what happened is that targeted microbials targeted for receptors on the circulating tumor cells would be injected into the patient. And then the ultrasonic wristband would become active and begin emitting continuous ultrasound signal into the blood vessels below it. And as shown by the diagram, as you can see, when a circulating tumor cell that's attached to a microbial presses underneath the device, an ultrasound wave will hit the microbial and the microbial will reflect, it, reflect back a unique ultrasound signature. This will be identified by the device and the user and the doctor will be alerted that a circulating tumor cell has actually crossed by. And then so they can use that information to do further scans and further treatment of how they're going to proceed in uh, treating this patient. But so far I've just proved the concept from the actual device and improving the concept I first did some images of the microbials in the cells and instead uh -huh. of testing on circulating tumor cells which are very difficult to grow in culture and less practical uh -huh. I decided to use U87 uh, glioblastoma cells. So the first thing I did was create and test targeted microbubbles targeted for receptors on U87 cells, the alpha-V beta-3 receptor. Um, so in this, uh, these experiments are performed in a flow chamber where the microbials I created are run over the cells that I was testing them on and I can uh, test for the attachment rate. So this is a control and this experiment is a primary experiment. So I created my primary microbubbles by mixing anti-alpha-V3 antibodies a FITSI, which is a fluorescent molecule of microbials, ran it through the flow chamber and tested the attachment rate. So you see the microbials are in green and the U87 cells are in gray. So you can see there's a high level of attachment here and this is shown here. So the results from this experiment in panel A are shown in the screen bar with number of microbials per field on the y-axis. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you can see, this is the primary control. And instead of using anti-alpha B3 antibody microbials, I decided to use uh, isotype control microbials, which means they're non-specific. And this is a primary control. Other controls were tested as well. I just did not put them up here. And that, the results of this are shown here. And then, okay. I, yeah. and then after I wanted to do that, I wanted to test the ultrasound signal to see in the actual device if I could truly differentiate a circulating tumor cell right. compared to you know, all the other stuff that's flowing around in the blood vessel, sure. like white bullet cells, red blood cells, etc. Uh -huh. And how did you run that test? So these are two phantoms uh, uh -huh. that kind of simulate the environment of the blood vessel. Sure. And this uh, is cells, media, and the targeted microbubbles. And this is just the cells in the media. So you can uh -huh. see just by the images, the signal that you're getting from this, the uh -huh. ultrasound signal, uh -huh. is much higher than the signal that you're getting from this. Uh -huh. This is proving that my methods and my techniques would be allowed me to differentiate between this compared to the other things that are passing by. In the and the system. microbubbles are um, chemically or biologically, physiologically, um, engineered so that they target that particular type of cancer cell? Yeah, so, yeah. so basically they're coated with strepcavidin, which is a molecule, uh -huh. um, and basically I used a certain type of antibody and I was able to combine the two in order to create these specific targeted microbes. Cool. Yeah, and so 
those are the results from that experiment and i'll just talk real quick about some impact so this as i said this device will be really affordable mm -hmm. i'm talking about like hundreds of dollars sure. compared to millions of dollars yeah so it makes a huge impact in third world countries it makes mm -hmm. a huge impact on cancer patients because it's comfortable mm -hmm. and wearable it's not something that they have to worry about and right. allow them to survive for a long period of time without having to worry you know is my cancer back that kind of stuff because i remember you know a lot of my family members have suffered through those type of questions and it's really hard for us. And so I guess you'd have to kind of start looking at all of the different variations of cancer and finding that particular micro bubble component that you need to use. What's actually amazing about this system uh -huh. is that circulating tumor cells come from all malignant tumors, so like sure. breast cancers, uh, uh -huh. ovarian cancer, that kind right. of stuff. And they all often express this epithelial cell adhesion molecule receptor called EPCAM. So I don't actually have to change it based on which cancer I'm viewing. This is oh. a generalized system for any type of malignant cancer. And they, so the cancer tumor will be growing in a particular location. You're wearing the device on your wrist. Yeah. And the, but the tumor cells also get sloughed off and yeah. go into the regular bloodstream. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Basically, what happens is it uh, the tumor reaches a certain size, uh -huh. and at that point, cells begin to break off from the tumor uh -huh. in an attempt to spread around the body. Fascinating. Um, so my goal is to detect these while they're traveling around. Nanotechnology. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Actually, micro technology. Yeah. Micro <laughs> oh, it's not nano. No. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs>